the tour that you're on now is coming to an end. Uh, tell me about uh, how this tour has treated you and how would you rate it? It's been an awesome tour. Um, it's very weird because it's over seven weeks long and normally tours this length are normally with like a pretty big sized band, you know, playing like really big, like 3,000 capacity venues. And this is the first tour we've done in a long time where it's, you know, a stacked bill of up and coming bands rather than just one band, you know? And which is actually beneficial to us because kids like a show with a bunch of good bands rather than one good band and people they've never heard of. So we're actually seeing kids that have liked our band and never actually came out to our shows before because they like all the other bands as well. And everyone's kind of helping each other. All the like, like people that like transit, like will somehow get into us just from us playing the same show. And they don't leave the show. They're all stoked on just music in general. I mean, it'd be great to have a hit. It'd be great to have a couple million bucks, but. I'd rather be a band that's been around for 12 years and plays to 200 kids wherever we go for all of those years, just making steady money, being able to live. Um, but yeah, I mean, we didn't do that by choice. I mean, the fact that we've been a band for eight years, there's not, not, not much we could have done for the first four years we were in high school, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't tour. We just played in Michigan, maybe Chicago here and there. Uh, then after that, you know, we put out an EP and then a full length. Uh, this was all, you know, after high school. And we've just been touring on our own, like on our own tour, uh, on our own terms, DIY. And I think the newfound success came from when we finally put out a really great record and a really great label heard the really great record and said, let's make this actually happen for the first time for you guys. You've toured too much for to go unnoticed. So then, you know, we got on some really big tours. Uh, we got some good distribution for the record. So everything pretty much just came together. Before we signed or even had interest in uh, getting signed, uh, we started meeting other bands just from going to shows, playing shows of them or whatever. And bands like Streetlight Manifesto took us out on two tours in a row. And you know, bands like Wilhelm Scream took us under their wing. And a really important part about bands is you can tour forever and it won't do anything. If you tour with the right bands, it'll do everything. And that's kind of what helped us out. Like those Streetlight Manifesto tours, like we're, we didn't even have a booking agent for years. And Nick, would, Nick used to book all of our tours. And then out of nowhere, we started getting these bigger tours in a row, which is bizarre to us. And then once you know the label thing and the booking agent thing came together, it was just this explosion where like we have the right record at the right time, and everything's finally happening. People are finally like, you can talk to someone now and be like, have you heard the Swellers? And they go, I've heard of them. And that's, that's cool enough for us, you know? So hopefully the next record is where people go, yeah, I like them. That we've so. been a band that bands like. <laughs> Uh, Paramore took us out, Less Than Jake took us out, Motion City took us out, H2O. It, it's all because these bands heard us and said, let's take this band out, you know? We never bought onto a tour, we never did anything like that. We just, we've done everything on our own terms ever since we started, and that's something to be really proud of that I'm stoked on. But yeah, we're just hoping that, uh, like, you know, every couple of months we're starting to see more and more fans trickle into shows and everything, so we want to be a band that people like, not just bands like, because, uh, or else maybe we'll break up and then get back together. We'll see what happens. Let's talk about the record uh, for a bit, uh, ups and downsizing. Uh, it's been out for a year now. Tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, very weird, huh? Yeah, I looked that up on uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote all the music pretty much over the course of the two years since the last record before that came out. Uh, Jonathan and I write all the music and all the lyrics, and uh, we just had a bunch of ideas of what we wanted to write songs about, and it's all pretty much deep stuff. I mean. The only song that we've ever written that is remotely about a girl could be about a guy. So like, we've never you know taken that route of like, let's write a song about a girl and get all the little 14 year old teeny boppers jumping. So we were like, let's write a song about someone dying. Let's write a song about me dying. Let's write a song about our town dying. Very, very dark record, but uh. And the, the thing that a lot of people don't get, they think it's a concept record, but the reality is we just write personal things. And all that stuff, like without us even trying kind of has a theme to it. It's like things that affect us is what we write about. We have, you know, songs relating everything from like suicide, uh, Nick just like random thoughts about him dying in general with the song Dirt. And, and then uh, the thematic thing is the whole ups and downsizing concept. Um, the Michigan economy is failing and it used to be like just a Michigan a Flint thing and now the whole world is actually feeling a recession. So for the first time, everyone can relate to that kind of thing. Our parents lost their job, or our dad lost his job, and that's kind of the focus of the song, Ups and Downsizing, which 
in turn became the focus of the record. So that's definitely the thing that everyone relates to. I used to, we used to do all the MySpace thing, and then now it's kind of Twitter. That's the main thing now. So I try and keep in touch with as many people as we can. Nick does that through his Facebook. You know, everybody's kind of doing it in their own way. And that way, not only, uh, actually, I guess the videos that we do too, that's definitely the biggest one we have. You have people like, you know, seeing what we're up to. And it's more than just, here's your record. It's like, it's getting to know the actual band, which can in turn also hurt your band because people think your best friends just from watching you. But you know, it's, it's kind of cool. Like it, it gives it a whole new dynamic and kids actually want to continue to be a part of our band just because they can relate to us now. Yeah, the days of the rock star are absolutely dead because you can turn on YouTube and see a video of them whenever you want. Yeah. Back in the day, like Jim Morrison was considered God because no one ever knew what he was doing. He's just like this mythical creature that would show up on stage and be like, whoa. Now he's on Twitter and he's like, yeah, I'm eating pizza. But me, it's like you, you, you see me playing guitar with some random dude in the street, like in Chicago on YouTube. Like things that aren't even related to my band, like type in my name, it'll show up. And you're just like, oh, well, that dude's a normal dude. Cool. So you got to leave a little bit of mystery, which is cool. You get to find people and you kind of make their, like, I mean, not necessarily in this case, but like other people, like you, you can make their day by just responding to them. And like, to us, we're just like, oh, whatever, we're people. But to a lot of people, they're like, you're a band I really look up to, you know? And it, it kind of boggles our mind because there were bands like that when I was little, like the band Mill and Colin, like that's one of my favorite bands growing up. And when I was 14, I wrote an email to the drummer and he wrote me back like the next day. It was the craziest thing that's ever happened. And then like just recently, we played with them in Belgium and I got to meet him and we talked about all this stuff. And it's just so bizarre because I'm like, oh, he's just a person like me. But, like, you know, all these kids that are, like, 13 years old have no idea what it's like. And so that way, like, if I could, you know, help someone out just by saying hi, or, you know, just little things like that, just, like, lurking, you know. It's, it's a very, cool. very magical thing just to talk to someone you dig what they do. It happened to me all the time, and there's, there's been kids that have come up to me and actually kind of freaked out a little bit, and they're, they're like, I can't believe it's really you. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like... Like, what? Like, how can you be this excited to meet me? I, I'm just in a band, like, I'm, I'm just used to, like, my friends watching my band. But, yeah, when you put yourself on, a, on the map like that, it kind of gets a little bit more intense. It's very, I don't know, it's, it's, like, actually humbling in a way. You know what I mean? Like, people will basically think that you're something way bigger than you are. And then you actually check in with yourself, like, no way, dude. Like, I'm not any, I'm not what you think I am. So, there's other people, a lot of rockers have the reverse effect though when people freak out they're like hell yeah i am a rock god what's up and those are the people who suck no you're, you're pretty good no i totally get where you're coming from because a little while ago max bemis uh he replied to me on, on twitter and i just like started tripping balls he just for a millisecond he he knows who you are type thing you know he, right. he concentrated on you and that just that connects the bonds with the music and the artists and stuff like that and Obviously, when those things, those kinds of things happen, I think that artists uh, will definitely have not just a follower, but a fan for life type thing when you establish yeah. that kind of connection. Yeah, exactly. Here is your thong. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Use it in good taste. Oh, man. That's well, amazing. Our thank you. Camera. Not a problem. Our merch guy will wear this, Chris. It's definitely awesome. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, definitely, man. Thanks for doing this. I'm trying to tie this up to you. But honestly, now that the way. camera's off, Seriously, fuck you, get out of her van. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? We actually need to be famous now, so. Merci.